Hey Jeepers, episode 247 is here and this week we get more details about the 2018 Jeep pickup. And tuck in your bibs, foodies, Gina is back with an all new Feed Me segment fresh from the trail. We have a whole bunch of reviews to go through. We'll play your voicemails and we'll get our communications up to speed with a lesson on antenna length. As you just heard, John from the Center Steer Podcast joins us this week. Tam reviews the Jeep Badge of Honor app and we'll get a little creative with some things from the hardware store that can be used on your next trail ride. We've got all that and more coming up on this week's Jeep Talk Show. This episode of the Jeep Talk Show is sponsored by, in part, Crawl Bright Performance Off-Road Lighting. Are you still dealing with dim lights that ruin your nighttime adventures? Well, don't put up with Lumen Envy for a minute longer. Go to crawlbright.com and see how to get your rig to light up the night. That's crawlbright.com. You're listening to a 4x4, 4x4 Radio Network Podcast. Are you ready? It's the G Talk Show. What the hell happened to your hair? With Tammy on Wrangler. <laughs> Tony and Josh on Cherokee. So sit back. Strap in. And brace yourself. First week in G. So what's next for Jeep and the Wrangler? Well, over the last 75 years and through various configurations and trims, the Jeep Wrangler has essentially remained a purpose-built SUV with rugged construction and a relatively simple design. So what's the news you may be wondering? Well, we've been reporting for months now the verification of the rumor that is the Jeep pickup. So let me be clear, folks. It's no longer a rumor. It's going to happen. It's all a matter of when. And now we've got confirmation of a twin debut with its sibling for the 2018 model year. And it will be called Gladiator. It'll be the first pickup in the Jeep showroom since the fall of the Comanche MJ in 1992. Now, what is new are the rumors circulating that there might be a diesel version of the pickup truck and possibly hybrid variants of both platforms. What's fairly certain is what this new Wrangler and its offshoot are going to be made out of. Different materials and technology will likely debut on both these new Jeeps. So what's the latest? Well, the entire hood of the next-gen Wrangler and the new Gladiator will be comprised of aluminum, as will the interior of the doors. The rumor claims an employee from metal supplier Alcoa confirmed the use of Alcoa 6022 sheet aluminum for both the inside and outside hood, along with the inside and outside of both the front and rear doors. This does not mean the door and the hood will be the only place, though, the lightweight metal will be used, as we may see aluminum show up in other areas of the Jeep as well. Now, this doesn't come as a surprise. In a bid to achieve better fuel economy and efficiency, and of course, hit all those lovely EPA regulations, the next Wrangler is going to have to pack in a host of upgrades and never-before-seen technology or manufacturing practices. So what's on the drawing board for the next-gen Wrangler variants? Well, likely an 8-speed automatic transmission. The current or possibly tuned version of the 3.6-liter Pentastar V6, there's likely going to be a 2-liter turbocharged 4-cylinder option as well. Perhaps a standard in the lower trim levels. I know, I know. Who wants a four-banger, right? Well, this little Turbo 4 that will be coming out as an option, at least in the Wrangler platform, will be delivering close to 300 horsepower. Yeah, that's real ponies, folks. Compare that to the 182 horsepower stock rating of the 2006 Wrangler. We're talking nearly double, guys. This is awesome. The company already has such an engine, officially rated at 276 horsepower. A relatively flat torque curve as well at around a 295 foot-pound between 2550 and 4500 RPM. And that engine is set to debut in the 2017 Alfa Romeo Giulia. Now, that engine is just going to need a little bit of altering. That altered version, nicknamed Hurricane for the U.S. market, is said to be benefiting from direct fuel injection, turbocharging, obviously, and variable valve timing. As a first in Jeep pickup history, we might even see a mild hybrid system option. Best guesstimates of the price tag, guys? Well, they've been hovering right around the 30K mark, give or take a couple grand, depending on the trim levels. And if we're lucky, Jeepers, you can get your first look at these in person at your local dealership in late 2017. And that means, guess what? Test drives. Oh, yeah. Hey, I want to thank each and every one of you guys out there who help us out each and every week by submitting stories for This Week in Jeep. If you have a story you should be, we should be reporting on, or you have a response to any one of our stories, by all means, shoot us an email to info at jeeptalkshow.com. Yeah, I was going to whine about the uh, the torque, but I see the torque was uh, 295 foot-pounds, so gosh, I guess I can't bitch about that. And now, that is also in the car version of this. Now, obviously, the timing is going to be a little bit different. I'm mm-hmm. sure that it's going to be tuned for a little bit more grunt, a little bit lower in the RPM range, 
And of course, you know, transfer cases and transmission options and all the other stuff comes into play with where that power is going to fit in the RPM range. Right. So, and of course, this is a car motor that they that we were talking about. There's going to be a version of this, obviously the same block, uh, a lot of the same components and everything else, but some different configurations and of course, the addition of that turbo. So, going to be very very anxious to see how that it not only is going to fit in the Jeep but also how it's going to look and perform. Wow. A lot of very cool stuff coming up here in the next couple of years in Jeep, guys. It is very exciting. I don't like the aluminum, but at least it's not a complete aluminum vehicle like the Ford truck right. is. Right. Yeah, exactly, which has been getting horrible reviews <laughs> from the... Oh, man. I'm sure I really you've hope seen the commercial where they do the toolbox drop from the edge and punch a hole in the bed oh, of the truck. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it's <laughs> it's it's been an absolute joke. Now, I think that, that Jeep is going to be doing things the right way with minimizing where the aluminum is going to go and focusing it primarily on inconsequential areas. The hood, not really that big of a deal. Same thing with the door skins. Right. That's really not that big of a deal. Now, obviously, the guys who want to throw some magnetic signs on there <laughs> might have to come up with a different option. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But, uh, you know, that's what we got our vinyl wraps for nowadays. Vinyl wraps and uh, rivets. There you go. There you go. Well, uh, anybody that, uh, I, I don't know, four or five years into it, people are going to be taking those doors off and uh, putting in tube doors anyway. There you go. Yep. Um, I could see myself in one of those uh, little pickup trucks. You know, the, the MJs, the uh, the Jeep uh, Cherokee type pickup was... Uh, was a pretty snazzy, and I, I wish they had continued on with those. Yeah, yeah. For their time, they were great, and and this is soon. I'm sure it's going to be a a very big hit, and uh, with all the options and the trim packages and everything else that's coming out around this, and of course with the potential option of a diesel. Oh, oh, boy, that, this, yeah. I was yeah, going to say no, the off road market is just going to go nuts over this. Yeah, diesel would be really be nice. That's what they ought to be talking about is a, a diesel standard in there. Well, the problem is, is that the U.S. market hasn't really opened the door wide open like the U.K. market has. Now, in Europe, diesel is is pretty much the standard. Here, not so much. We like our gasoline. So the diesels have never really gotten the love they deserve uh, until in the recent maybe 10 or 15 years past. Now, of course, Jeep has never really fully blown open the doors on on diesel. We've had a couple options in, in some of the lesser mod, model Jeeps, but this will be the first year that if they really are serious about this, they're going to do a, a mainstream marketing campaign with a diesel engine in a Jeep for the first time ever. That'd be pretty cool. Tammy, what do you think? I mean, uh, you've uh, been into Jeeping for six months and you've had two, uh, two J Jeep JKUs. Are you uh, ready you? to switch to a truck? <laughs> no. No, no, no. What do you no. think about that? What do you think about the truck? Is that kind of cool looking? Anything? Uh, does it give you any interest at all? Not really. What about no, your husband? He I, drives a truck or, or used no, to. No, now that I now that I have the Jeep, he doesn't he's like, That's my thing. Oh really? So, yeah. Yeah. Ah, I just I just love Jeeps. I always have it even before yeah. I had one. All right. Well that's just uh, that you know, everything for Each everyone. his own, right? Exactly. Yep. What's up guys? I'm Kobe. And I'm Jason. From Morgan Trail Off Road. You're listening to Jeep Talk Show. Listening to Jeep Talk Show, the number one Jeep podcast at my mom's house. You've heard of Jeep Hair Don't Care, right? Well, I'm here talking with people who do care. That is, welcome to Jeep Hair. We care. I am here with one of my favorite people on the planet. Somebody I'm very proud to know and call family. My father-in-law, Pete Buttrick, a former maintenance sergeant on B-52s for the United States Air Force. What do you care about? Well, I care about the veterans in this country, particularly the disabled veterans. I'm a volunteer driver, and I take them from a clinic in Athens, Georgia, over to hospital appointments in Augusta, Georgia. We wait there for them till their appointments are over, and then we drive them back to Athens to their homes. That's really great. Hey, thanks for watching Jeep Hair We Care. Here's some more information. Alrighty, well, here's our guest host this week, uh, barely uh, uh, asleep awake at this uh, this late hour over there where he is, John from uh, the Center Steer Podcast, and uh, I got to tell you, John has a very interesting uh, podcast. I have uh, never been anything more than a casual observer of Land Rovers, but uh, he makes a, a very interesting podcast. He, of course, he is part of the Four by Four Network because obviously we only have uh, interesting podcasts on our Four by Four Radio Network. 
And uh, but I really enjoy uh, his podcast. And uh, John, um, well, first off, let me tell you that uh, the Sinister uh, podcast is the only Land Rover podcast on the planet. Wow, is that true, John, or did you just make that up? I both. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely played. To my knowledge, it is the only Land Rover podcast on the planet. So Land Rovers are everywhere, so you have listeners really all over the planet. That's my understanding. Yes, indeed, sir. Yeah, because of people that uh, reach out to you and, and, and call in. Um, so uh, tell us a little bit about the, the Center Steer podcast. How did you get it started? How long has it been going? Uh, we're in our third year, coming up on episode number 42. Uh, we're a monthly podcast, so we only record once a month. Uh, and, uh, oh, geez, I knew what I was going to say. And then you guys sound so professional and all of a sudden I feel like an idiot. It's, it's all smoke um, and mirrors, John, all smoke uh, and mirrors. <laughs> smoke and mirrors. Uh, it, and it, we talk about Land Rovers, uh, as, uh, you know, it's a, it's a mark that is as a small footprint here in North America, but, uh, it is uh, well known around the world. And I think, uh, well, no, well, becoming it's well known here, of course. Uh, everyone thinks they're Range Rovers, uh, but <laughs> <Yes>. they're not. <laughs> I, I am guilty of that. I know um, you do, and you do it on purpose now. I have done it on purpose, oh. yes. <laughs> now we got a, we Range have a Rover very large Land Rover dealership Land Rover out here in, uh, in Portland, Oregon. We have a, a rather large Land Rover presence out here in the Northwest, in fact. And there's a lot of expedition uh, wheeling and, and stuff out here. And I do see Land Rovers out on the rocks and out on the trails out in the woods and stuff as well. Uh, how, what made you start this Land Rover specific podcast, John? Well, there wasn't one, and uh, I wanted to do a podcast. I, I listened to a lot of podcasts uh, and wanted to do one, and this just seemed a natural thing. I've been into Land Rover since the uh, year 2000 or so, uh, and uh, just kind of a natural fit uh, for my two interests and, and pulled them together and do you have a, do you have a uh, do you have a history of broadcasting or or podcasting? I mean, is this your first uh, no. first go at this sort of thing? He's got the it's, voice for it, doesn't he? No, yeah, no, he does yeah, have a good set of pipes. Usually, what people say, yeah, and uh, so no, I have no history. I did it myself. Uh, I mean, I have help, uh, but you know, started it all and <laughs> yeah, and got it together. So, how badly is this going to set your reputation back being on a Jeep podcast? Oh, <laughs> not at all, not at all, none. Well, you know there you. It, you know, there's an ancestral tie between yeah, the yeah. two marks, and in addition to where I live, Pittsburgh, uh, there's a, a, a also a strong ancestral tie to Jeep. Uh, so it's a very nice uh, convergence. I think so too. But uh, you know, I don't buy into the I don't buy into bashing everybody and 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 their different makes and models because uh, you know you like what you like. Yeah, exactly. Very um, well put. Yeah, exactly. So. Uh, the, uh, I guess one of the really cool things that, uh, that I like about the, uh, the, the centers to your podcast is how you guys, uh, talk about the Range Rover and what they're doing with the Range Rovers and what they're, they're coming out with this. And it reminds me a lot of how we feel about the, uh, the Jeep Cherokee, the new Jeep Cherokee. So it seems like there's a, uh, even though they're two different vehicles, two different companies, you see this, the companies making the same I think mistakes, probably not mistakes. They're probably doing market uh, research and doing what they need to do to make money. But uh, at least in, in our eyes, they're they're not doing what they should. And I just find it really interesting that there's a, a kind of a, a convergence of the, the two uh, very different vehicles there. Well, they're playing to, we would want them to play to their history and heritage, as we like to say in the Land Rover world. Uh, but as you said, they're trying to sell a product and make money. And they're trying to sell as many vehicles as they can to a broad selection of people. And uh, so, yeah, they're going to, things are going to, of course, there's always change, but right. they're going to, they're going to, they're going to go to that. I don't want to say lowest common denominator. That's not really, that's not the right word, but the broad audience. <laughs> lowest IQ. <laughs> I know where you're going. So, and I just want to tell, audience. I just want to tell our, our, our uh, audio only listeners, there is not a police uh, car behind you or, or probably not. That's the <laughs> sirens over there close to John's house. Yeah, so. I live, I live very close to route 30, which is a, you know, national road, the first road that went all the way coast to coast. Mm -hmm. uh, side note, the Lincoln highway. And uh, I like history and um, yeah. Oh, there's a Land Rover commercial. 
Um, <laughs> it's for the new Disco Sport. Focus, focus on the show, John. John. Oh, no, focus come on, on the man. show. Disco Sport, man. Uh, yeah. So, and it's a heavily used road for emergency vehicles. So, yeah, you'll hear them all. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, hey, speaking about commercials and, and things like that, now there's uh, the Overland Expo East that's coming up here pretty soon. Are you you were trying to get out to that, weren't you? Absolutely correct. Yeah, you may be aware that I think you guys didn't you have a correspondent? Thinking, or maybe I'm thinking of Dan Cole's four by four podcast, but he sent somebody to Overland Expo. Uh, but there's a East version now it takes place at the Biltmore State in North Carolina, and I would I'm going uh, at least that's unless assuming my boss gives me uh, vacation time that I've asked for. Oh, there you go. Are you planning on doing any uh, like on the scene reporting or any interviews or stuff while you're there? I'm going to try. I, I haven't set anything up and uh, I, I, I kind of dawdled a little bit and getting behind the eight ball or whatever words you want to use uh, and just haven't uh, come up with anything structured. But uh, I think I would like to do some field reporting. I've done some field reporting before uh, and when I and this is where I get the drop that I went to Peterborough in the UK and uh, <laughs> for a Land Rover <laughs> show there. That and, must uh, have been really some, cool. Did some, cool. Did, did some uh, recording from there. So. so, John, I may have asked you this before, uh, but I'm going to ask again. What in the world possesses Land Rover owners to have a Land Rover when the U.S. government makes it so damn difficult to have one in the, the United States? Well, you're thinking of the older ones that are more prized by those of us who uh, like to go off-roading or overland uh versus the more modern vehicles uh that are usually designed to take you from point a to point b uh, well in my mind that's range rovers you, what you're saying is that you can buy a land rover uh, a modern day land rover i thought they weren't i thought they didn't make the the modern day i mean the the old style like the john wayne movie safari land rovers <laughs> <laughs> well all right so it's it's history time um Sit back and relax. Uh, so yeah, Land Rovers your make, and then you have several models. You've got the Range Rover, you have the Discovery, you have the, uh, and you have the Defender. They're moving into this family situation mm -hmm. where they're going to have instead of having just makes and models, they're going to have makes, models, and families. Ah. Uh, and the but back in the beginning, the, there was only one vehicle. It was called the Land Rover, and that was the one that everybody is aware of. It's the iconic one. It's what became the Defender later on. Uh, when the discovery came out in 1991, they needed uh, uh, a name for the uh, for the at that time third vehicle uh, that they had. That the, and they and everyone just called it a series truck. It was a Land Rover Series One, Series Two, Two A Three. Ah, okay. And then it got the name Defender uh, when they um, came out with the, with the with the Discovery. They already had the Range Rover. Range Rover came out in 70, 1970. That's a kind of a short history of that. There's obviously a little more. But. Oh, sure. Yeah, I've, I've listened to the podcast, uh, 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 numerous uh, uh, episodes of your podcast, and I never did quite uh, understand all that, what you just said. That's a that's a big help in, in my understanding, since I have no background uh, in sure. uh, in the Land Rover stuff and, and didn't take my time to go Google, Google search it. So I no, appreciate yeah, that's, that. That's understandable, yeah. The, so it, back in 1940, was it 47 or 48? I can look at my, my uh, picture. Uh, 19, yeah, 1948 is when the original Land Rover came out and it wasn't until 1970 that the Range Rover came out. So you had the Range Rover and the Land Rover. And by then they had, then they would call them series. That's just how the British do things. Uh, <laughs> like we have seasons for TV shows, they have series. Uh, and, uh, so they will, and they did that with their vehicles too. So you, oh. instead of saying Mark, they'll say series. Gotcha. So now you have, uh, you have a land rover vehicle it, it, like yes. a 1980s model is that correct uh, i have uh, currently have two uh of course the question that you should ask is how many are roadworthy uh i, I think the answer is none if i <laughs> if i remember the shows properly <laughs> uh, i have a functioning roadworthy 1980 series 3 109 xmod ffr jeez <laughs> it's a British. What does that, that's a little more than usual. So what does yeah. that mean? It's uh, of course it's a Series Three Land Rover, and it's one one hundred nine. So that's its wheelbase, one hundred nine wheel inch wheelbase. Uh, it is XMOD, which is ex Ministry of Defense. Uh, FFR means that it was fitted for radio. So ah. it, uh, this specific truck was served in the one hundred fourth Royal Artillery, based out of Cardiff, Wales. I was lucky to get some history on it, and it probably would have called in uh, artillery strikes. That is huh. just cool as all yeah, hell. I am tickled yeah. pink by that story. Seriously. It yeah. is. 
I, I love history about vehicles, even if it's not a Jeep. And, you know, that, definitely not a Jeep. It's okay. It, nobody's blaming you. But, uh, <laughs> they're cousins. No, but in all, in all seriousness, John, you I, I have love... Land Rover I, without Jeeps. I love the I love the history, especially of old retired war vehicles. Uh, when when you have a service vehicle that that actually has bona fide history behind it, that is something special. And if you you have that story, if you got pictures and and you know documentation, all that sort of stuff, it just makes it just that much more cooler. So you actually had to ship that from over there to over here. Correct. Yeah, Good I imported Lord. it in two thousand nine. Oh, wow. Yeah, and it was on a row row boat. Uh, it came from uh, the 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 dock, the port of Southampton, the United Kingdom, uh, and came into the port of Baltimore. It was on a, on a row row boat, which I always think is cool. You know what a row row boat is? No. Roll on, roll off. <laughs> Literally, off, if your vehicle off. could roll on, roll off, it's cheaper than putting it into a shipping crate. Yeah, I can see that. Well, so this is the kind of things that you guys can hear on the Center Steer podcast. It's it's a lot of fun. Uh, there's a, John, what do you have? Uh, two or three regulars on your show, right? Oh, uh, we have two or three regulars and, and yeah, correct. Uh, actually I'd say three additional uh, Morgan's in Vermont. Uh, he has a, his own website called seriesparts.com uh, that helps, uh, to keep, keep, uh, fo- uh, you know, Land Rover owners looking for parts for their vehicle. Uh, and that's, he does that out of the goodness of his heart. It's mm-hmm. a free service to the community. Oh, very nice. Um, yep. And then of course, Harold and, uh, uh, who's, uh, friend of mine and uh, uh, works on my trucks and uh, he's local to me and also Dave Carroll who's uh, local also usually comes in and then we have some others here and there and usually try to have a guest every month Been I did have been doing pretty well the last couple of months in getting uh, getting some really good guests in the community uh, I'm as you won't see me on frame but I will hold up uh, just interviewed uh, this lady named Terry Ann Wakeman, uh, she is uh, well known in the Land Rover community, kind of a legend, and she just wrote a book called The Essential Guide to Overland Travel in the United States and Canada. Uh, it's really good for any make or uh, mark. I should try not to cover the microphone up. Uh, the book <laughs> will be coming out uh, at Overland Expo East, actually. Oh, nice. And so we got her on the, on, the, uh, on the podcast. That'll be coming out in a week or so. Uh, and so anyways, yes, I've, I've, uh, sorry, plugging the podcast, I guess. That's no, what that's good. Doing, right? uh, let me ask you one quick question. Then we'll, we'll roll along here with the rest of the show. Um, well, it's not about all about me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what we told you to get you on, John. You did. Uh, you did. Uh, what I was going to ask about now, see, I'm, I'm, I'm having, a, having a good time and I'm forgetting what I was going to ask. Oh, can you, can you briefly explain what overlanding is? Yes. Uh, overlanding uh, basically is it's it's generic. It's no, it's not necessarily. I'm sorry. It's not. It's brand agnostic. That's the best way to put it. So it's basically about getting from point A to point B and the journey. And there may be some off roading as we as I think we commonly understand it. There may not be. Typically, it's over paved roads. Uh, may be on the highway or it may be on the lesser roads uh, in British terms, A and B roads, which are you know smaller roads. Uh, state roads. Uh, so it's just, it's more, and it means different things to different folks, uh, but it's usually about the journey, getting somewhere and, and doing it in an off-road capable vehicle. Uh, typically, you're going to have minimal off actual off-roading, though, mm-hmm. uh, where you're have, you, know, you might get challenged once in a while, but you're not necessarily uh, going to be challenged all the time. You're not going rock crawling just to go rock crawling. Right. So you're not, uh, you're, you don't have to ship your vehicle to another continent. Or or live out of your vehicle for you know two years to be overlanding. You, no, you can, you can, and that's that's probably a, that's good to add to that, def, that definition. Typically, people do in fact uh, live out of their vehicles and overland. Uh, as I know, you know this. Uh, you know, we have uh, I've uh, you know thanks to the podcast, I've got some really good friends from around the world. Uh, there's a and I probably if you don't mind me telling the story of the bells. It's kind of illustrative of off of overlanding. Sure. Uh, the yep. be- bells are from South uh, South Africa. Uh, they uh, uh, and they have a book which I also have here, but it's called uh, "We Will Be Free," uh, which I recommend you get because it'll also help them out because they are in fact overlanding. Uh, they took their uh, two kids and their Land Rover Defender 130, and if you're following along, 130 is is its wheelbase, and they shipped it from South Africa to South America. And they wanted to do, you know, do the whole continent. In fact, they did. And they did, you know, Brazil and Paraguay and Chile and all that business. Wrote a book and then continued on up into North America. And they went all the way up to Canada. 
and then, excuse me, and then it got into Alaska, uh, saw about three or four flakes of snow, and immediately turned around. <laughs> I remember and that. Uh, I remember Alaska. that. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell is this stuff? That's exactly what happened. Well, the funny thing is they actually went to Overland Expo in the West, and there was more snow there. <laughs> there was in Alaska, I think. <laughs> so, just funny. And you but have th- plans of doing your own overland uh, multi-month, multi-year. I, I can't remember Correct. a trip yourself, right? Correct. Yeah, next year I turn. And um, as a, as a, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, you dropped myself, out. <laughs> yeah, that, that's I turned that too. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, and I'm borrowing from. I, people have said, "Oh, this is your midlife crisis." No, it's not. I'm borrowing for my retirement. I'm there's, borrowing time. Because there's, no, there's no way I'm going to live to 100. <laughs> it's That's not right. midlife. <laughs> I don't think so. I'm past that. <laughs> part, part of overlanding is to be like self-reliant, not to like stop at, a, at you know, the Hampton Inn and get a room. And It can be. It, 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 I, there's no set definition, which I think actually Terry Ann, uh, which I, had I known this, I would have done, I've done a little research, but she defines it too. And it's... It, it's <sighs> It's whatever you want it to be. If yeah, you that's kind it, of what I've gotten out really of it. It really is. Yeah, that's what I've kind of gotten out of it. It was a, kind yeah. of a trick question. I was wondering where you were going to go with that, John. But mm-hmm. uh, it seems to be that, you know, if I want to take a four-hour trip to uh, Dallas and uh, go eat at an IHOP, that, I could call that overlanding. I'm in a four-wheel drive. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> right. <laughs> you right. know? And there's so. people that go birding. They There's people who like to go uh, spot do train spotting. Uh, I'm going to, on mine, it's going to be visiting friends and family. I may be in your town. Oh, good. Uh, and also go to breweries because I like good beer. And uh, so my hope oh, is to. You got to come up breweries. to my neck of the woods, John. I'm def- I've never been to the Pacific Northwest, so that's definitely on my list. Beer capital of the world. No, I'm sorry. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody I'm just sorry, threw craft down. beer capital of the world. I, I'm also part owner of a brewery, so I have to. Outstanding. You and I, sir, have to have some talks. All right, so so John's going to be uh, continuing with the show with his uh, uh, with us making color commentary and uh, and what I'm allowed. Yeah, you're you're gonna your mic's going to be on as long as you don't get out of the line. But it's we're going to hot, huh? I got a hot mic. <laughs> but we're going to jump over here to uh, Gina and uh, get with another food segment that she's done for us, and uh, we've been waiting a while, and uh, well, here it is. Hey Jeep Talk Show, it's Gina here back again with Nom News and I want to show you my great salami sammies. They are perfect for the trail. Why? Because there's no mayonnaise so they're really easy to make. They're really easy to just go ahead and get them all packaged up and take them out on the trail. They're perfect. They have some great pesto and salami and cheese and they're on a focaccia bread. So I'm going to show you how to make them. Grab a focaccia loaf, cut it in half, and then add some fresh pesto. Add all of the meats and cheeses that you like, and then cut that into desired squares. I like to go small just so I can eat as many or or as few as I want. Then I like to grab a nice container and then add those with a little bit of parchment paper on the bottom. Those travel so well. I then seal that up and throw that in my cooler. Okay, so here they are. It's amazing. Look at these little bite size. Oh my goodness, you can cut them up into just about any sizes that you want. I'll do bite size just because they're really easy to go. So I always do focaccia, pesto, of course, the cheese meats, all of those. Oh my goodness, they are so good. And it's amazing because they travel well. The pesto kind of goes into the focaccia without um being mayonnaise and no lettuce or tomato and these will last literally i'll take these uh with us on a trail and as long as they're packaged well we can keep these for three days as long as they're on some type of ice or cooler so they're amazing so anyway enjoy mm. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed my Salami Sammies. And also, if you're interested, next month I'm going to be uh, doing a Jeep talk show food segment again, but from Colorado this time. We love to go out west in September and do Black Bear Pass. I don't know if anyone's done that before. It's a great trail um, in Colorado. And also we're going to be doing uh, I'm a Jean Pass and some of those near Telluride, Ure, Colorado. So anyway, Tune in again, and I'm going to bring you some great food inspirations from out west. 
Wow, that she really comes up with some great looking food. Now you can find Gina over at nomnews.com. That's nom like nom 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 nom. nom, nom. <laughs> no, so, seriously, Gina, if you're listening, those Sammys look great. I'm a foodie at heart. You're yes. really speaking to me on that one. Oh, I'm gonna have to use that one next trail uh, next trail ride. Yep, yep. And uh, Tammy yep. is still impressed with how you can cook stuff on your on your engine. I know that fascinates me. <laughs> I can't wait to try it. It makes sense, right? Would oh you, man, you manifold think. meat is great. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> and we had uh, a really uh, camp. If I can suggest a, a quick camping idea, sure. We had sure. a group of people. Uh, I don't know why no one had thought of this uh, before. I've been camping for 20 years, and finally someone did this. Take uh, meats, whatever meats you want, you know, uh, beef, chicken, uh, whatnot, pork. Uh, wrap each of those up in tin foil, and you see where I'm going here. Cut up vegetables, <laughs> uh, each of those in their own tin foil bag. Throw them on the fire, and then you have, and, and people can create their own sandwiches or burrito mm-hmm. or whatever they want, and it's like a, it's like a buffet. It was like. Fantastic! Like, I, why did anybody ever think of this before? And they probably had. Just took twenty years of me I, camping for someone. I still to don't understand them. why food tastes so much better when it's cooked outdoors, too. I agree, especially on a on a fire. Yeah, coals, yeah. And they, wonderful. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You're listening to a four by four by four radio network podcast. Yes. <laughs> the deep. G- <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I screwed up already. John, Did you talk John was on the on this other camera going. Is it me? Is it me? <laughs> uh, just visit four by four radio network dot com and learn more about the four by four podcast, the Center Steer podcast, which is the only Land Rover podcast on the planet, <laughs> and Trail Tracers podcast. We'll have to put that in there. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, folks. We received the results of our survey. 18 of you have taken time to take our survey and a 18? big thank you from all <laughs> yes. of us here at the Jeep Talk Show. <laughs> the rest of you, please just take one minute and fill out our survey. 18? <laughs> Where is it at, you say? It's at jeeptalkshow.com slash survey. Wait, what are you doing 18? With the result? It, seriously, people, 18 of you. And I'm sure there was like Nikki G doing seven of them. So <laughs> come on. <laughs> It, no, really, guys, right, push pause right now and head over and take our survey, jeeptalkshow.com slash survey. If you're mm-hmm. listening to this, we need you to help us out. It's, it's, we're not going to ask for you know what your blood type, social security number, all that. This is very, very general demographic type yeah. of questions. We're just trying to figure out what kind of people listen to the show. Now, obviously, we know what kind of people. They wear tinfoil hats and drive Jeeps. Yeah, we get it. Okay? But we're looking for more specifics. This is going to help us market the show and help grow the show. Mm-hmm. If you guys want us to grow the show, well, you guys have to help us out. So head over to jeeptalkshow.com slash survey. Do it right now. Please. It's not going to take but a minute long. Hook us up with that survey. Trust me. It's very painless, and you're not going to be spammed a whole bunch for doing it or anything no, like that. None so at hook all. Hook us up, and I guarantee we'll hook you guys up in the future. The only spamming you're going to get is from us on the show, bitching at you for not doing the doing the survey. Seriously, eighteen? <laughs> Come on. Kill I think him. I think John had a question. You're asking where this information is going to be available. I I, I didn't. I know, what, uh, do you, what, what do you What do you do with it? I was just curious. What uh, advertisers what uh, advertisers like that information? They like to see what the demographics are. Spam, 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 mm-hmm. spam, spam. Well, spam. Uh, the nice thing is, is that uh, nobody's going to get uh, spammed from uh, from this. It's just uh, information that we're gathering. All righty. Well, you guys know what time it is. Hopefully, Tammy does too. Shut up and listen. Shut up. So shut up. You don't shut up. Shut up, Shane. Hey. <laughs> shut up and listen. It's time for Wrangler talk. It's time for G Mama. So if you listen Tuesday night to the Jeep Talk Holland show, I mentioned how I was a little disappointed in something Jeep. Um, this past March, I downloaded the app, the Jeep Badge of Honor, which some people, you know, say it's lame. Some people are really <laughs> excited about it to put little badges on their Jeeps. I was personally excited because I was um, able to run two trails here in Roush Creek. And the Jeep Badge of Honor is there are different off-road parks all over the country with different trails where if you ride the trail and you download their app, Jeep will send you a little badge you can put on your Jeep or your toolbox or whatever. So anyway, there were two trails at Roush Creek. Um, I drove the first one, Trail 11, in March. The second one, Crawler's Ridge, I drove in May. 
And so when you're ready to run the trail, you check into the app and then you ride the trail and Jeep sends you uh, an email. Jeep had a badge of honor, sends you an email and it takes about eight to 12 weeks after you drive the trail for you to get the badge. Well, to my disappointment, it's been a lot longer than 12 weeks and I haven't received my badges. And I emailed the Jeep badge of honor several times and they have not responded at all. Actually, some of their emails just bounce back. Um, I even called the Jeep customer service line and they tell me that it's a different department and there's nothing they can do. So I'm just a little frustrated, wondering if anyone else out there has ran, used this and has not gotten their badges and maybe somebody has a suggestion on what I can do. So anyway, <laughs> if you would like to add anything to this, I'd like to hear from you. Just email at info at jeeptalkshow.com and use the subject line Wrangler Talk. Hey, where else can they contact you now, Tammy? You can also contact me on my blog at jeepmama.com, J-E-E-P-M-O-M-M-A. Where else can they contact you at, Tammy? (laughs) (laughs) The forum, Uh, Jeep Talk Forum. We have the the sections and stuff. yes, (laughs) yes. We have a forum, um, jeeptalkshowforum.com, where where you can post you can read our posts. You can get updates on the Jeep Talk Show, and you get, can start your own thread. Get more information behind the segments, uh, and maybe you have some questions about the segments. I know that, uh, especially Josh with his uh, his Tech Talk segments, he, he tries to cram a lot of information in a short amount of time, and uh, the Jeep Talk Forum will allow him to expand that and give you the whole story. And he also talks so darn fast, trying to get all that information in. <laughs> you'll you'll actually be able to go be, go in there and look back and 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 read it without having to press rewind several times. Yeah, it's basically uh, m- more for the for those who can't uh, who can't write as fast as I can talk because uh, <laughs> yeah, I always have you guys take notes and I always go way too fast. <laughs> but a lot of good information, and uh, we wanted to be able to get that information out to everybody. Attention, all Jeep lovers out there. Our Jeeps aren't made just to look cool, they're made to get used. Let me ask you, how can you get the most out of your Jeep if your lights are worthless? Let me tell you about a brand that will keep the night lit up. It's the guys over at Crawl Bright Performance Off-Road Lighting. They have the highest quality lights made from the top components in the industry. They use aircraft-grade aluminum, a virtually unbreakable polycarbonate lens, and only the best name brand LEDs to give you the brightest light. These lights are 100% waterproof and backed by a three-year replacement guarantee. But listen, I know what you're thinking. That sounds great, but it's got to be expensive, right? Nope. Their prices are just a fraction of the cost of those other guys that don't even use the same quality parts. This is a no-brainer, folks, and we're about to make your decision to upgrade your lighting a whole lot easier. Just head over to crawlbright.com and check out the cool lighting gear for your Jeep. Enter Jeep Talk Show at checkout for a special 20% discount on everything in your basket. That's right, Jeepers, the biggest discount ever offered on performance auxiliary lighting, and it's all yours exclusively for being a Jeep Talk Show listener. So quit hiding in the dark and get on to the bright side. Crawlbright.com. Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show? What are you talking about, man? Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show? I got no idea what the heck. Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? Get out of my face, yo. Hey, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? Underwater. Hey, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? In the bubble bath. Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? No clue. And where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? While flexing on stumps. Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? Hey, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? Hey, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? I would assume on the radio. The Jeep Talk Show, available on iTunes and at jeeptalkshow.com. I just love that promo. Hey, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? Call us and let us know. Just call 530-675-4102 any time of the day or night and let us know. Uh, John, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? Uh, it, apparently, uh, <laughs> all of your listeners are Pittsburghers because you end the sentence in a preposition. So I'm just like, <laughs> I, uh, do. I we do that in the Midwest too. I never, yeah. I never paid attention to in English class. As soon as they started talking about the rules for spelling, I went, "This is a load of crap." <laughs> they need to make this simpler. So anyway, well, that's how Jeep got its name, right? GP General Purpose. Yeah, exactly. I actually, I thought all it was Eugene. Mixed up spelling. I thought it was Eugene from Pie Pie, but anyway. Uh, I listen to it uh, right off the website, which is four by four radio radio network dot com. Yeah, that's a great place to go, uh, and uh, you can listen to all the great four by four radio network podcast. And I, I, there's there's one on there about uh, Land Rovers, and I think it's the only one on the planet. 
Indeed, you are correct, sir. It is the only one. Mm -hmm. Aluminum bodies, mind you. Hey, we uh, recently had a theft in the family, folks. Uh, Dan Cole, you may remember him. He's a fan of the show and, of course, host of the 4x4 podcast. Uh, well, he had something stolen from him, and this is kind of a big one, guys. The Tapui Grand Savannah uh, rooftop tent stolen from the Fort Wainwright RV storage lot on Saturday night. That's right, guys. While he was busy working, his Jeep was being stored, and somebody decided to help themselves into that yard and stole a bunch of John's stuff. Now, uh, or Dan's stuff, rather. Um, inside were sleeping bags and a string of battery-powered LED lights. I mean, seriously, who steals 250 pounds of tent and sleeping bags that are bolted to a trailer? It almost sounds like it was personal. I don't know, guys, but be on the lookout for this. It is a Tapui Grand Sabana rooftop tent. It was bolted to his off-road trailer, and really, this is just absolutely horrible. It is. Uh, this is this is just atrocious, and and this kind of behavior um, really is unacceptable, especially on a base. I mean, are you kidding me? So, uh, if, guys, keep your eyes peeled for this. If you see something like this on Craigslist, by all means, do a quick Google image search for the Tapui T E P U I Gran G R A N Sabana S A B A N A rooftop tent. Take a look at that, and if you see one of those pop up on Craigslist or something like that, you know, uh, maybe want to let the authorities know. I don't know. This is definitely, you know, again, in the Wainwright RV, the Fort Wainwright RV storage lot, Saturday night. This last Saturday night, it was stolen, guys. If you know anything, please reach out to us and the authorities, and we'll make sure that uh, the appropriate people get the information. And, and I'll just mention that Dan is a U.S. serviceman, uh, and he doesn't need this kind of crap after putting his life on the line going Seriously. to Iraq and Afghanistan and re really all over the world. And I don't know if you mentioned it, Josh, but uh, Dan is up there stationed in Alaska right now, and that's where this theft took place out of an RV park. Uh, so, yeah, you would think that it would be pretty safe bolted to a trailer. And if you, you guys think. don't, yeah, if you guys don't recall, Dan actually uh, built the trailer and uh, got the, uh, the, t the, the rooftop tent, bolted it to the, the trailer so that they could do an overland trip as he was being restationed from uh, somewhere in the middle of the United States. He's Kansas, all over. Kansas, I think. Where was it? Kansas, wasn't it? I think so. Somewhere around there. Missouri is what I was going to say, but I, I can't remember. Anyway, he drove uh, his, uh, his uh, uh, Jeep, uh, his 99 uh, Jeep Cherokee, which I think is red, uh, all the way. No, it's not, <laughs> Tony. <laughs> They're all red, aren't they? Uh, they yeah. all want to be. So he drove that all the way up to Alaska, so through Canada, and actually uh, had to go around some uh, some major fires that were going on. So this tent isn't very very old. I think it's less than a year old. Well, not only that, guys, it has a lot of sentimental yes. value as well. And I mean, this is a salt of the earth pillar of the community kind of guy too. I mean, this kind of stuff does not should not be happening to um, to this kind of guy. So, mm -mm. guys, if you know anything. Please, no. please, let's get this tent back to who it belongs to. Let's make it a point. I don't care if the, it, it, I mean, I'm sure Dan does, but I don't even care if the, if the tent is trashed. Let's make it a point that nobody messes with Jeepers. Nobody steals Jeepers stuff. If you Come know on, anything, I mean, it's, you know, golden rule, guys. Yeah. If it ain't yours, don't take it. Yeah. If you, huh. if you just suspect, let the authorities know. I don't know how many listeners we have up in Alaska. I think there's like five people total up there anyway. But if you're on a trip to Alaska or perhaps it's even been um, moved down into Canada someplace, just keep on a lookout for this thing. And uh, let's see what if we can get a little justice for Dan. Yeah, absolutely. Well, hey, uh, some other good news, Tony. We have a, uh, a new Jeeper or a new off-roader uh, in the world now, don't we? Yep. Uh, this is a BERF announcement. I love that word, BERF. Uh, so shout out and congratulations to Ben Allred of the Off-Road Podcast and guest host right here on the Jeep Talk Show last week. Ben his, and his wife Sonia gave birth to Theodore Benjamin Allred uh, today actually on September 22nd at the time of the recording of the show. Thor, uh, Theodore was 7 pounds, 3 ounces, and 19.5 inches long. We reached out to Ben to, uh, for a take on the birth and he said he couldn't have done it without his wife. <laughs> Smart man, Ben. Smart man. Smart These man. ounces and inches you talk about, I don't, I don't understand. Well, you're not a metric person over there, are you? <laughs> Holy crap. That's, that's a failed measurement system if there ever was one. <laughs> well, hey, congratulations to Ben and Sonia. Um, I, I don't know if that's your first or if you're seventh. No, I think, they're, uh, I think this is case, the third. But in any case, uh, congratulations and uh, hope everything uh, came out okay. Ten fingers, ten toes and all that. Yep, yep. Well, let's get over to some reviews. I don't know why I love reviews so much. I guess it's all because it's so much about me and the show. 
Well, <laughs> we do get constructive criticism, guys, so don't let that shy you no. away from uh, giving us a review on iTunes or Stitcher Radio. Um, we're all over the web, guys, so you can even leave us a review on Facebook or on YouTube as well in any one of our videos. And we, of course, read all of our reviews, even if they are not so stellar. This one, however, is great, and this one comes in from Guchuk on September, 7th, uh, se- September 15th. Uh, it's Jeep Talk Show Review, LJ 4x4. It says, entertaining and informative. Give us a five-star review. I do a fair amount of running and can no longer listen to music while doing so. I usually listen to audiobooks. However, I caught a bad case of the Jeep bug and bought an <laughs> 05 Wrangler LJ earlier this year. While looking for something to occupy my runs, I stumbled across this podcast. Good, fun, and interactive between call-in voicemails and the Jeep Talk Show call-in show every Tuesday night. I can't keep up with my hours of running with their past and current content, so I've had to supplement with Trail Chasers and the 4x4 podcast. Also, great podcast. I eagerly await Wednesdays and Fridays when the new content drops. Thanks, and keep up the great show. P.S. It's a black LJ. <laughs> All right. Well, that a boy. <laughs> yeah, my kind oh, well. of jeeper. Speaking of black Jeeps, hashtag Team Black Jeeps. Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> title of this one by ViperGuy08. He even has a really cool name. On September 22nd, 2016, he gave us a five-star rating. This show is definitely something every Jeeper should listen be listening to. I can't wait for the new episode each week. Anytime I'm thinking of doing something else to my Jeep, it seems like they cover it on the next episode. They have a good mix of pros from the off-road industry as well as get, as guest hosts. I have an 03 TJ Sport 4.5 lift 33s, SYE kit, custom rear drive shaft, Ford 8.8 axle swap. Hashtag Team Black Jeeps. Yeah, the SYE. Oh, we got to start getting thing. that tra- I trending, know. guys. Hashtag here we go. <laughs> now that's a hash brown I can get behind. Uh, I, you know, I just I feel obligated. To make sure that you guys understand something. No, uh, 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 no, 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 no. <laughs> All right. Absolutely not. All right. Not I'll, I'll hold that to later. <laughs> so here's uh, some reviews uh, from Facebook. Uh, I was really surprised. I guess Facebook's making changes all the time, but you can go over to uh, the uh, facebook.com slash Jeep Talk Show and uh, do up a review for us on Facebook. And Jesse Farmer did. He gave us a five star on uh, September 17th at 1.37 a.m. Jesse, what were you doing up at 1.37? He's right a anyway. worker. Anyway, uh, we won't go any further. I guess he was talking to that state farm agent. So uh, it's about Jeeps. What's not to like? Oh, love. He sounds hideous. <laughs> love tech tips and hearing about Jeeps event, Jeep adventures. Keep up the good work. Are you sure Jesse is male? Because that could be a female. I don't oh. know. It could be a farmer as well as, as far as I know. It's true. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. It's a J E S S E though. Commentary. <laughs> that's right you're fine <laughs> commentary hey, we had we had a uh, ben lavender who reviewed the jeep talk show as well gave us a five-star review as well i always enjoy my weekly jts fix hashtag black jeeps rock oh boy uh-huh. now there's another one that's what i'm talking uh-huh. about Ooh, red jeeps are sexy <laughs> unless they're not <laughs> <laughs> All righty, and then oh, we, we have got one sub- more here. Now, this is actually from a recent um, a recent platform that we uh, that we just got accepted to and have been distributing our content on. We are officially, uh, as of just a couple weeks ago, on iHeartRadio, guys. That's right. The Jeep Talk Show is on iHeartRadio, a free app that you can download on your smartphone. And uh, hey, John, if you could read this uh, this uh, review from us that we got from iHeartRadio, that'd be awesome. It's on page forty two. Uh- <laughs> You put it in red. <laughs> Mike Hunter's Day of Dirt Adventure. Great Jeep podcast with good tech, Jeep news, and a little funny thrown in. I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Uh, look forward to it every week. This guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got to get him to do some voiceover work for us. I like the way he says it. It's uh, it, it's kind of superior. It's got, he's got that British kind of uh, British yep. twang to what he's saying there. <laughs> Wait a hey, minute. Guys. Yeah. You know what all you that can listen ro- all that Range Rover stuff. I'm sorry, Tammy. Go ahead. Oh. <laughs> now you can listen to the Jeep Talk Show twice a week. We have we call it the Jeep Talk Call In Show. Well, because it's a show where you can call in live and talk to Tony and I. It's a chance for you to share your stories about Jeep adventures, ask questions about your Jeep, share Jeep advice, and well, just 
talk about anything Jeep, and that's Tuesday nights, 8 o'clock Central, 9 o'clock Eastern. It's a 30-minute show where you can call in and talk to us. Yeah, we've been having a lot of fun, a lot of, a lot of good yeah, callers. Yeah, last week was really fun. Yep, yep. Yeah, I got to call in and crash you guys' party every now and again. Yeah, well, yeah, you've you only do. done it once. We, we wonder. We sit on the edge of our seats waiting. No, I'm Josh, sure you do. Yeah. Is Josh going to call now? My, uh, my favorite part was, uh, well, Josh, thanks for calling. Uh, and after I've muted yeah. you, <laughs> Josh, oh thanks for calling. <laughs> and Josh is going, but no, uh, I wasn't done. <laughs> you got tech questions? Ah, oh, what do I ever? We have answers. Oh, that's good. because I can... It's Tech Talk with Jeep Talk. Well, it's time to get creative and think a little outside the toolbox. Oh. On episode 245, we answered Cameron Kirkland's question about a loose front end. And not only how to diagnose the specific issues, but also some tips on how to do it. This week, we're going to close the lid on the toolbox and take a break from playing mechanic and instead get a little creative. And here's what I mean. Not everyone is lucky enough to have a four-wheel drive shop close to home. But just about every town I've come across has a hardware store or a farm supply store. There are plenty of products on the shelves at your local Ace Hardware or True Value, Home Depot, Lowe's. You get the idea. With a little innovation, you can reappropriate for your wheeling rig. Now, I can go on and on about all the obvious things like nuts and bolts and spray paint, shovels, axes, tie downs, duct tape, zip ties. Come on. We all know the list. Yawn. Boring. We're going to exercise that noodle in our skull a bit and come up with some creative ways. Now, apply some commonly available items to your rig in ways other than which they were originally intended. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I know. It's the federal crime to use this product in a manner inconsistent with its labeling or intended purpose. Yada, yada, prison time, yada, yada, hefty fine, snore. Okay. Every now and again, you got to get funky with some good old-fashioned redneck engineering. Ingenuity. In, in just something, anyways. Got a good idea for us? Well, I want you to send it to info at jeeptalkshow.com. All right, let's get into this. I know it goes without saying, but we're not responsible if you or your Jeep are damaged attempting any of this. Always seek the advice or guidance of a professional if you have any questions or before tackling something outside of your comfort zone. All right. Now, you need to relocate your intake or build a custom snorkel? ABS pipe is inexpensive and comes in a variety of sizes and bends to fit nearly any application. Dryer hose could work in a pinch, too, if it meant the difference between getting home and not. Rebar can be welded to the edge of steel rims to reinforce the bead area and keep them from bending. You'll never want to drive over 10 miles an hour ever again, but hey, that's the price to pay for beef. And please, don't use rebar for your steering or suspension components, guys. It's just not strong enough for those kinds of forces. Chain can be used as a limiting strap or to keep your coils from falling out or your drive line or brake lines from overextending. If you want to go real cheap, nylon strapping from a tie-down can also work if you happen to have a grommet press handy. You wouldn't want to use a chain or something like a, on something like a desert racer or a Jeep that sees airtime, but for slow crawling, nah, they work just fine. If you're doorless or wheeling a buggy but still want a dome light and you're not all that handy with the test light and crimp connectors, then a stick-on LED light works really good. They are battery-powered and draw very little amperage, so the batteries last over a year before they have to be replaced. There's a lot of ways to get creative in the plumbing department, like using ball valves, fittings, and hose to help install an onboard air system. Making half doors but still want protection from mud, wind, and cold? Well, clear vinyl is durable and expensive enough to make it a viable option for temporary windows. How about some expanded metal? It's got all sorts of uses, from see-through floorboards to roof racks to grill inserts to light covers. Well, you get the idea. Just make certain to ca capture the edges of the metal with something like door trim, where it can act as a giant saw, cutting through whatever it encounters. Trust me, wires, hoses, your lunch, your leg... Now, let's face it, a massive bleeding laceration will put a stop to any fun out on the trail. And speaking of clear plastic, Lexan, yeah, you know the stuff. It's hard to break. It's almost bulletproof, meaning it can be used as body panels in a buggy, mud flaps, or even floorboards. Heading back to the plumbing section, we'll find some pipe insulation, which can be used on roll bars as padding. But in my experience, it's not really all that dense enough for it to stop your head from smacking your noggin on a roll bar when a surprise bump catches you off guard. It's better than nothing, but doubling up or getting to the densest insulation you can find is going to be helpful. All right, now this one is out of the don't you ever tell anyone I told you to do this <laughs> file. We all like the premise behind beadlocks. They let you air down to a single digits. They look cool, and they're generally considered to be a very strong type of wheel. But they usually come with a heavy price tag. So mm -hmm. if you have a trailered wheeler, meaning a rig that never, ever sees the road, then I have a solution for the poor man's beadlocks. In your local hardware store, you will find a whole mess of caulking tubes filled with this and that. Liquid nails or Gorilla Glue is a couple that come to mind, and some of you are cringing already and know exactly <laughs> where I'm going with this. If you'd like to be able to run a tire locked to your rim and air down to, well, nothing, 
then all you have to do is glue your tires to your aluminum rims. Yes, I said glue. The aforementioned products will secure just about anything to just about anything else. Want to glue that porta potty to the side of that bulldozer? No problem. How about welding someone's car door shut without those pesky sparks and burning metal? No problem. Of course, there won't be a tire shop this side of Neptune that will dismount those for you, and getting them off yourself will be a weekend-long project. But hey, for the time being, those tires aren't going to go anywhere. Expansion plugs. They come in a variety of sizes and can be used to uh, plug floorboard drain holes or even things like differentials, gearboxes, freeze plugs, and more as emergency trail repairs. They are inexpensive and don't take up much room in your toolbox either. And, uh, well, hey, if you want to cut down on noise and vibration inside your vehicle, that rubberized roofing sealer that we all know and love can be used as a poor man's bedliner. Don't use this stuff on your wife's Grand Cherokee, though. It smells just awful as it's applied, but the smell does eventually go away, but it will take some time. We can't forget about all the usual stuff, either like shovels, zip ties, duct tape, all the stuff I mentioned before. And Hey, if you guys have a tip or trick that comes straight from the aisles of Home Depot or Lowe's, then let us know. Even if it's straight out of the trailer park, that'll work too. If we read your idea on the air, we'll be sure to give you guys a shout out. Unless it's something so incredibly redneck that the biggest <laughs> hillbilly won't even take credit for it. Well, then we'll use a little bit more discretion. <laughs> hey, Jeepers, let me know if you guys have a tech question you would like answered here on the Jeep Talk Show. Just shoot me an email to info at jeeptalkshow.com. That was, that was great, Josh. That was really uh, informative because there's a, Thank you. a lot of thinking out of the box there or uh, thinking in the box if you're actually in jail and you have time on your hands. <laughs> yeah. So now, again, guys, not, not all this stuff is going to be um, winning you any prizes at the show and shine. Yeah. And, uh, and honestly, it might even get you some ridicule. But look, if you want or need to get out on the trail and you basically don't have the kind of money for expensive uh, accessories and, and things like that. There are ways around that. And this is just a small offering of some of the stuff that you can use from your average everyday hardware store to get your build going or at least get you over the hump or back out on the trail. So uh, again, guys, if you have an idea that fits into this category, I definitely want to hear it. Drop us an, a, an email or shoot us a voicemail, any, anything like that. I want to know your guys' crazy ideas. And of course, there's the, the brand new forum that we started up, jeeptalkforum.com. We actually have a section over there for uh, the uh, uh, Jeep, uh, Jeep Talk, Tech Talk with Jeep Talk. And uh, you'll uh, see more information there at Jeep Talk. Is this the red green forum. section of the show? Red yeah, green. Right. <laughs> Pretty <red> much. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, there's yeah, a timely yeah. reference, John. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about the PBS thing, right? The, the Red uh, Green Show. It's actually a Canadian show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I love that. the Red Green Show. I actually think Red I, Green's fantastic. I think I follow him on uh, on Facebook. Funny guy. Hey, you know, to, um, Josh likes to hear from you for Tech Talk stuff, but, you know, we love to hear from you about anything you may have to share. Um, you can leave us a voicemail at 530-675-4102 or jump over to our website at jeeptalkshow.com and leave us a message. Just click on the little leave voicemail button on the right-hand side of the screen. Hey, this is Tony. And I'm Tammy. And this is Josh. And you've reached our 24-7 voicemail line. You guys know what to do, so at the beep, leave your message. Hey, this is Joliet Johnny. I've got a gear review and a question. Uh, gear review. I bought a $12 smartwatch off of Amazon. I'm talking to you on it right now. Uh, it doesn't do all that much. Um, if, if you're not sure if you want a smartwatch, it's a good product to buy, provided you can actually understand what I'm saying. I, I hear that it, it, it's audible, but I don't know, because I'm not on the other end. Uh, it, it doesn't have that. Uh, my question is, $12. my Cherokee, when I pull out of the driveway and cut the wheel right, I notice a slight vibration in the wheel as as the car is rolling. If I'm sitting still and I cut the wheel, I find nothing. Uh, where, where should I start looking? I'm, I'm, I have a steering dampener. I just haven't got around to putting on. I think that might be the problem. But... I, I don't know. I, I I have never had this problem in a vehicle I've owned. Mostly I've owned front wheel drive. Maybe this is just a rear wheel drive problem. All right. Bye. I think it has to be a uh, a front end issue if you, it's happening that's, whenever you turn the steering wheel. Yeah, that's definitely a front end issue. I would. Um, here, here's the very short answer, uh, Juliet Johnny. Um, head over and listen to episode two forty five. Uh, we're just talking about that uh, a little bit ago. 
and we were addressing pretty much everything to look for in the front end of your mm-hmm. Jeep and, and all the troubleshooting procedures to go about doing it. Take a listen to Tech Talk in episode 245 and, and just follow my instructions, buddy, and I guarantee you you'll find what you're looking for. I think John is confused because he doesn't think that vehicles don't have vibration. Is that correct? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I hear them talking bad. I spend uh, more than four hours in a 1980 Land Rover Series 3 <laughs> driving it constantly. Yeah. <laughs> that have optional brakes, I understand. Uh, uh, oh, well, the fastest way, I don't know if you realize this, the fastest way to slow down a, a Land Rover is to take your foot off the accelerator. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I've had that joke for years. And, but I'm uh, bummed. Yeah. Oh, I missed it. Tony, I know. <laughs> well played. All right. Uh, and actually, literally well played. Uh, so let's get over to Eddie. And uh, he's a former DJ. Let's see if we can pick up if he's uh, like radio DJ or goes out to those, you know, those, uh, those lame people that go out to the trade shows and stuff and do the job. How dare you. <laughs> Hey guys and gals, how you doing? My first time calling. Uh, I had a Jeep back 2004. I loved it, but uh, because I had a DJ business, uh, I had to get something bigger. Ah, now there we go. I'm retired from the DJ business, so I get another Jeep. Uh, the thing that I think is crazy. I'm from Massachusetts, and I'm looking right in the Hampshire border. But all the places uh, that selling Jeeps, you know, uh, the used ones are so freaking expensive. You know, 100,000, 25,000 miles. When I look at the uh, the Jeep.com page, uh, the entry-level Jeep is which all I want. A brand new one is like 24,000. So I'm thinking I'm going to go that way. You know, the only thing I need, I want a standard and uh, maybe air conditioning. But uh, other than that, I want to build it up myself. Uh, I don't understand. You know, some of the price, even the dealers, or the used ones, are like really rip-off pricing. I think, anyway, I don't know, but... Uh, uh, just uh, like you, you guys, your opinion. Love your show. Think it's great. A lot of fun. Uh, again, my name is Eddie. All right, take care. Bye bye. Well, Eddie, I think so, it's pretty pretty easy to understand. I mean, Jeep's had what seventy five straight months of record sales. So yeah, obviously, it's going to be expensive. Yeah, we know those record number. <laughs> those numbers were a little inflated <laughs> from their uh, reporting methods, but uh, but nonetheless, Eddie, I, I'm kind of surprised, <laughs> man. Uh, you know, I've been. I, I've been DJing for over 15 years, uh, close to 20 now. And, really? uh, and although I've sort of officially retired myself uh, from, from doing a lot of the kind of gigs that I have in the past, uh, I still do some side work uh, here and there, obviously. But uh, I've been DJing out of my Cherokee for, well, ever since I've owned it. Um, so it's, it's, that's one of the reasons I haven't been able to do or I've, I've held off on doing some of the modifications that I've wanted to because I still use it to, to cart gear around and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, you know, Hey, if you're looking for another Jeep and you still want to haul some gear, man, take a look at the Cherokees. You know, you could probably get into one that's been built and it's been taken very well care of for under 10 grand. And, and that will get you everywhere you want to go. And the four liter motor. Yeah. Strong engine, well, man. Well, you know, he said that he wanted to build the Jeep. So the, the, I think a great thing to do would get a Cherokee four wheel drive Cherokee, uh, red, if you can find it, they're very rare and then put in all the stuff. (laughs) All the stuff I that you sexy. any opportunity, I swear. <laughs> you. <laughs> it, you put in all the stuff that you want on there, and uh, uh, Josh can get all his crap in his uh, in his Cherokee, his ninety nine Cherokee. But I think you've said it's like much like a Tetris game because it, it is. And to- Eddie knows exactly what I'm talking <laughs> about. I, Eddie, look, man. I mean, I'm talking mains, monitors, all my gear, all my music, plus a full lighting rig and all the cables that I need to. Plus, you know, the the backdrops and the tables and everything else, all in my Jeep. And I do it by myself. Now, obviously, if you have a roadie that comes with you, that's not going to work out for you. And it sounds like you already have a vehicle set up for your DJing, but you've retired anyway. So what does it matter, man? Get the Jeep uh, that you so want. Can- yeah. You know, the funny thing is, um, we've never bought new cars before. We always would buy used cars until I bought my Jeep because we were going to buy a used Jeep and I saw it was only like $3,000 more to buy a new Jeep, Mm -hmm. the Wrangler anyway. And I'm like, that's, that's why we bought new. Yeah. They do hold their value. Yeah. Wranglers really do hold their value. And when I traded my Sahara, and I know I mentioned this before, but they listed my used Sahara for more than I bought it for. It was wow. there for a long time too, wasn't it? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, it was. Well, I don't know if, where, what they why they hold their for. value. 
Yeah. Yeah. Why do they hold their value? People just want yeah. them. Yeah. Uh, because of the way they're Supply built and what they're capable demand, of doing. Right? I think they're viewed as a, a fun vehicle that you can yeah. uh, that you can actually drive every day. And now it's time for some radio com tech. Another warrior is on the mesa. Let's talk about one of the first things I learned when I got into radios. Now, antenna length depends on the frequency you're using. Most everyone is familiar with 11 meters or citizen's band. There are three primary sized antennas, a full wave, half wave, or quarter wave. The quarter wave is the shortest antenna you can have and what most people use. Nine feet long in the case of the CB band. Yes, there are shorter CB antennas and we'll go into that in future segments. 20 meters on an amateur radio band is nearly twice the length of the 11 meter antenna at 17.32 feet for a quarter wave antenna. 40 meters, a popular mobile and fixed station band quarter wave, extends out to 34 feet. 80 meters, used by old goats that use RF from their radios to keep their pacemakers going, gets to a whopping 66.4 feet long. Wow, now that would be impressive on the back of your Jeep. Now my favorite. 2 meters, only 1.67 feet long. Hell, a full wave antenna is only 6.7 feet long. With modern electronics, repeaters, 70 centimeter, and internet links, you can talk around the world on two meters, all from the comfort of your Jeep. So just a quick intro into uh, how antenna length uh, depends on the frequency that you're using. Now, one of the things you might be wondering is, well, what if I'm not transmitting? Nope, it works better for for receivers as well. Uh, If you have the right sized antenna for the frequency that you're using, you will get a stronger signal. And uh, I think one of the uh, natural questions is, uh, well, if a full wave is so much longer, is that better than a half wave or a quarter wave? It is. It's a greater capture area. You get more electrons hitting that, striking that uh, antenna surface, and you get a stronger signal into your receiver. So, uh, and and also too, it helps you uh, transmit better. But generally speaking, in a mobile environment, uh, the you really don't want to go with something that's very, very long, as you can see from that video that I did. Uh, it uh, quarter wave is the the minimum that you can use, as long as you're using the surface of the vehicle as a ground plane. So, like if you have a Corvette or something that isn't metal, then you have to have a half wave antenna because that uh, half wave electrically uh, a half wave is the smallest antenna you can have. Now, uh, Josh, where did I go wrong on that? You got any questions from that? I mean, I, I'm sure you have lots of questions since that was such a quick, well, brief you overview. For, you, there's this one. The, the angle of the dangle is reversely proportionate to the heat of the meat. Everybody needs to know mm. that when it comes to selecting the length of your antenna. I like heating meat. What's a dangle? No. No. <laughs> I completely just made that up. Um, no, I, I know. So, I mean, there's, there's fiberglass antennas, there's steel whip antennas, there's all kinds of antennas when I'm looking for antennas. How do I know what length to pick for the CB that I have or the CB that I'm going to get? Well, fortunately, the, you know, they make a lot of CB antennas. They keep, really keep it simple for the CB folks. So if you go and buy something for a CB, it's already tuned uh, for the most part. Uh, you generally don't have to mess with it. Now, if you're starting to add things onto it like... Uh, coils and uh, like a, a coil so it can uh, move back and forth. You got to make sure you have the right length antenna. You just can't start adding stuff to the bottom of it and making it electrically longer and expect it to work properly because you're changing the length of the antenna at that point. So it doesn't now, matter if I if I get a a 48 inch steel whip or a 24 inch fiberglass antenna they're going to do the same thing and perform exactly the same way well we're keeping this simple so what i was showing you was the actual length of the antenna for the wavelength that you're using in other words 11 meters that is a distance measurement uh Mm -hmm. so it it it, the length of the antenna is directly proportional to the frequency that you're using now you can do various things with the antenna to make it shorter but then uh it's not um you're fooling the transmitter basically and you're, it will not work as well as a full quarter wave, half wave, or full uh, wave antenna. It's a compromise. And, they, and you do it because you don't want this 102-inch whip sticking out of the back of your Jeep. So when you use a, a four-foot uh, 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 antenna on the back of your Jeep, it's not going to work as well as a, a full quarter wave antenna. 
And, I see. And, and people will tell you it doesn't make any difference, blah, 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 blah. It's bull. I'm telling you, it, it, the quarter wave antenna is going to work much better as well as a half wave or a full wave. But there are concerns because what is it? Like 14 feet is the maximum height you can have on uh, uh, any vehicle you drive on the road. You can quickly exceed 14 feet uh, once you start looking at the hand bands. Mm, yeah. So mobile antennas are always a compromise unless you're doing two meters or 70 centimeters because those antennas are much shorter. And like I said, a full wave antenna on two meters is only 6.7 feet. So anyway, we'll have more about that uh, in upcoming uh, 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 segments. And also, too, I think uh, one of the common questions is, how do I know what length my antenna should be? Well, it's a real simple formula. You take 468 and divide that by the frequency of you know the what you're receiving or what you're going to be transmitting on, and it will tell you the length in feet of a half-wave antenna. You can, oh, we lost John. Uh, you can divide that by two, and then you'll have the um, uh, quarter wave value. Oh, I thought there was no math tonight. Well, there has to be math, Tammy. <laughs> That's it. I quit. You can't get around math. <laughs> hey, right. you know, folks, something every week we have and we like to listen to and hearing from is the mind of Nikki G. We do. From the mind of Nikki G. Hey, this is Nikki G. And uh, I want to record a sound drop for Tammy. So she has something to play whenever Tony plays his uh, Red Jeeps are sexy bit. Ooh, more whale songs. Here it goes. <laughs> <clears throat> Black Jeeps are okay oh. if you have one. And it has purple oh. accents. I guess. I oh. guess. <laughs> and uh, that being said, I want to talk about uh, things I didn't know about when I bought my Jeep. Uh, I didn't know anything about the Jeep wave, and I enjoy it. Uh, I'm driving down the road, and people wave at me all the time. And it's uh, not necessarily Jeep owners. Uh, other people in other various vehicles wave at me. Uh, I live in the South, and we're kind of laid back. So instead of waving with their whole hand, they just wave at me with one finger. Yeah, I knew it. <laughs> yeah. All right, boys and girls, I will uh, chat you later. You have a good one. Bye. I was waiting for the one finger wave comment. Uh, yeah, I was like, it's got to be coming. It's got to be coming. <laughs> Nicely done, Nikki G. Thank you. Yep, yep. Well, John's back. Um, he's not on not on screen, but uh, <laughs> he's kind of there. We can see half of him. Where um, am I? Am I here? Am I uh-huh. there? <laughs> Is anybody any, ever any really anywhere? I got to think about that one. Well, uh, real quick, I just want to let everybody know, uh, again, John with the Center Steer Podcast, uh, the world's only Ranger, no, L- Land Rover. You wound me, sir. You wound me. <laughs> a specific one podcast. day, Tony. One day. It's uh, it's very, it's a very entertaining podcast, and it, as you, you've seen the what little you've seen of John, you guys, I, I admit. Oh, I I really enjoy it. I'm I'm not kidding. It's a, I really enjoy that podcast. Uh, John's hilarious on there. Then some of the side uh, comments they they, they get uh, or sar- side trails they get off on is pretty funny. Uh, now also too, uh, John, you've got a Patreon account or something set up for the show, don't you? Indeed, in an attempt to. Uh, I don't know, recover some costs, I mm-hmm. guess, uh, for what I put into the podcast. I uh, uh, have set up a Patreon, which is a way to support artistic endeavors. Uh, and podcast is an artistic endeavor. So it's uh, sure. centersteer.com slash Patreon, which is C-E-N-T-R-E in the British spelling. and uh, Or you can go to Patreon slash centersteer if you wish to uh, throw a couple uh, dollars a month my way. I'm getting stickers made, and they're on route as we speak. Oh, that's yeah. great. That's always so fun. Stickers. Yeah, stickers are always fun. Now, I yeah. don't think we mentioned how people can find you on uh, Facebook, Twitter, how they can find the show. Uh, I know you're on Libsyn, uh, but uh, is there is it just uh, centersteer.com uh, with uh, C-E-N-T-R-E steer.com? And you are absolutely correct. C-E-N-T-R-E steer.com. Uh, d- by the way, do you know where that comes from? Why we called it that? I, I thought it was because uh, Center Steer spelled correctly was already taken. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it was interesting. You answered a question that I didn't ask, but that was a legit question. <laughs> oh, wait a minute.
No, where did it uh, come from, John? Yeah, but you get you go to centersteer.com and you can get access to all the places that we are. Uh, we're on Facebook at Center Steer uh, Podcast, on Twitter at Center Steer, and uh, of course Patreon. Those are the kind of the, the big three places that uh, hang out, and of course also available through the four by four radio show, radionetwork.com. <laughs> he never goes there. <laughs> All right, well, let's get over to some wheeling wear. Yeah, this is where we're going to talk about what events are coming up around the world and in your neck of the woods. And, uh, well, this one isn't exactly a wheeling event. This is more like, uh, heads up, guys, Soldier Pass in Sedona, Arizona, has been closed to public access. However, the Forestry Service granted Red Rock Western Jeep Tours access to the trail. So to see public land via an off-road vehicle, you now have to pay a private for-profit company. Is this the future of Jeep trails on public land in national forests? Come on. To learn more or to see what you guys can do to help out, because honestly, this is outrageous. Go check out Keep Soldier Pass Open on Facebook and use the hashtag Keep Soldier Pass Open, guys. Once again, Soldier Pass in Sedona, Arizona has been closed to public access, and the only way that you can get to that trail is to pay a Jeep tour company to take you out there. Jeez. Not cool. Anyways, guys, if you're looking for other off-road adventures, well, the Extreme ORV Expo is happening October 7th through the 9th at the Iona Fairgrounds in Iona, Michigan. All things off-road, guys. Three full days of participating in the off-road lifestyle and watching nine different off-road competitions. That's right, nine times. <laughs> Camping, live music, industry vendors, and miles and miles of off-road trails. Rocks, mud, articulation, dirt, you name it. They got a rock garden. They got an articulation course. They've got over two and a half miles of off-road courses. A 20-acre play bog. Bump and hustle course. Dirt drags, mud pit drags, show and shine. Industry vendors, camping, live music, raffle, and fun for the whole family. Guys, this is a absolute extreme expo. Once again, October 7th through the 9th, Iona Fairgrounds, Iona, Michigan. For more information, head to extremeorvexpo.com. We also have happening the same weekend in Vic the Victor Valley Four-Wheeler Club presents Rocktober. That's, that's right, guys. Johnson <laughs> Valley, California, home of King of the Hammers. This is an event that brings in hundreds of off-roaders. Off they gather in the famous Johnson Valley to tackle the trails and have some family fun. Guys, this this one draws a big crowd, so make sure you guys go check it out. VictorValleyFourWheelers.com for more information. All right, so we want you to know want you to know that the Jeep Talk Show is uh, an audio podcast as well. If you're watching us on YouTube, we want you to know that Jeep Talk Show is available in audio only format. Great to listen to while commuting or while working on your Jeep. Hey, you can subscribe via iTunes, Tuned In, Google Play, or Stitcher, and now iHeartRadio. Never miss an episode. Hey, speaking of subscribing, you can subscribe with your money. Yes, you can contribute directly to the show via PayPal. Just go to jeeptalkshow.com and look for the orange button that says subscribe. You can uh, select 25 cents a week up to $1. Your account will be charged weekly. Cancel at any time. Even if you don't subscribe, we appreciate you taking time to listen to our show. Hey, and did you know it can take up to four days for your favorite podcast episode to show up on Apple? It's true iTunes is a great free service, and we appreciate Apple for all their hard work, but we want our listeners to get the Jeep Talk Show as quickly as possible. That's why we're recommending that all of you iTunes users subscribe to our podcast. No multi-day delay. You'll get the newer episodes much quicker. Open up iTunes, search for Jeep Talk Show, and hit the subscribe button. Never miss another great, funny, informative podcast. And speaking of subscribing, make sure you guys check out our YouTube channel. We need all the subscriptions we can get. Every 100 subscribers, YouTube sends us a cookie. YouTube.com slash Jeep Talk Show. Cookie. So you can join the Jeep Talk Show team. We're looking for volunteers to manage our vast social media presence on the web. You can join the Jeep Talk Show social media uh, team and be our voice. Send email to info at jeeptalkshow.com to find out more. <laughs> well, that's it for this week, guys. And wherever you're wheeling, if you pack it in, make sure you pack it out. Let's leave our outdoor recreation spots in as good, if not better condition than they were when we arrived. And remember to always tread lightly, stay on designated trails, and don't wheel where you're not supposed to. If you'd like to learn more about the Tread Lightly principles and how you can help keep our trails and public lands open for off-road use, head over to www.treadlightly.org. Hey, folks, and don't forget to check out my journey on my blog at jeepmama, J-E-E-P-M-O-M-M-A dot com. And if you guys want to see what kind of fun I'm having in the voiceover world, make sure you guys go check out thevoiceofjosh.com. 
Yep. I uh, want to thank John for being here with us tonight. And John, I hope uh, hope you had a little fun. Hope you uh, got uh, a few words in edgewise. As you can see, it's uh, it's like three ducks and a June bug uh, here on the show. <laughs> in, in, indeed. I had it was a lot of fun. Thank you very much for having me on. It was a good time. Great. And we sure do Thanks, appreciate John. you being part of the, uh, the 4x4 Radio Network. You guys can uh, catch John and all the shows over at 40, 4x4radionetwork.com. And, of course, go and subscribe to the Center Steer podcast at C-E-N-T-R-E, steer, S-T-E-E-R, dot com. So do it now. You won't be, sa- you won't be, a, a, you won't be sad. It's a, it's a lot of fun listening to the show. And don't forget, Black, Re- Black Jeeps rock. <laughs> Hashtag Team Black Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that sounds a lot like the uh, when people complain about defenders and you know, serious trucks coil versus uh, leaf sprung. It just sounds okay. Oh, that's that's a that's a battle that goes on in the Jeep world as well, John. Yeah, yeah, I, I figured. Yeah, you got to have something, right? Guys, got to have something to talk about. 